Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, greetings from Tuvalu. I'm grateful to have the, the opportunity to speak with you today on the issue of climate change induced sea level rise and its dire implications for maritime zones, statehood, and our Pacific peoples. Climate change remains the single greatest threat we face in the Pacific today. Climate change related sea level rise is also a defining issue that imperils the livelihoods and well-being of our peoples and undermines the full realization of peaceful, secure, and sustainable future for our region and indeed for our planet. This has been alarmingly confirmed by the recent IPCC six assessment report. The relationship between climate change related sea level rise and maritime zones is of fundamental importance to our blue Pacific region. As large oceanic states within the Pacific continent, Pacific Island countries have a profound connection to and reliance on the ocean, which is at the heart of our geography, cultures and economies. Our past, present and future development is based on entitlements guaranteed under the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Climate change related sea level rise presents a threat to these guaranteed entitlements. For the Pacific, the implications of sea level rise, which include inundation of baselines, reduction of maritime zones, and potential loss of territory, sovereignty, and jurisdiction, are having a far reaching consequences for our region, its peoples, and their survival. Sea level rise threatens to reduce the size of our maritime zones, which we as oceanic peoples depend on for our food and revenue. It threatens to overwhelm our land territory, robbing us of one of the four criteria key to being recognized as a state. It threatens the mass displacement and forced migration of our people. The stakes are indeed quite high. Securing our maritime zones and statehood against the threats of sea level rise is therefore a major priority for Tuvalu and our Pacific region today. Across the Tuvalu government, uh, we have adopted several programs and initiatives to mitigate against the threats of climate change and sea level rise to our lands and peoples. These include our Rising Nation Initiative, Commission of Small Island States on Climate Change and Sea Level Rise, and large-scale land reclamation projects. Last year, Tuvalu launched the Future Now project, which seeks to secure our nations against the worst effects of climate change. One of the initiatives under the project looks specifically at preserving Tuvalu's maritime boundaries and statehood in the face of climate change threats. Under this initiative, Tuvalu has been working throughout 2021 and this year to progress bilateral agreements on the preservation of maritime boundaries and statehood. In our foreign policy, the Sikulangi, we state that any joint communiques on diplomatic relations we form must recognize the statehood and maritime boundaries of Tuvalu as permanent despite any future impacts of sea level rise. We also have joint communiques on reaffirming existing diplomatic relations that contain the same language. So far, we have signed communiques with Venezuela, St. Kitts and Nevis, Gabon, the Bahamas, Vanuatu, Niue, Palau, and Taiwan. Uh, this means that these seven countries have confirmed in writing that they believe Tuvalu should always retain its statehood and maritime boundaries despite the impacts of climate change. We are encouraging all our partners to sign these communiques with Tuvalu, but we are also encouraging other Pacific nations to adopt the joint communique approach as a way of cementing our regional entitlements through bilateral means. As more nations sign these communiques, we are contributing to the formation of international customary law that acknowledges the permanency of maritime boundaries and statehood and that will pave the way for the revision of treaties like the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. We are also taking progressive steps as a Pacific region. Last year, the Pacific Islands Forum issued a declaration on preserving maritime zones in the face of climate change related sea level rise, which asserted that maritime boundaries of Pacific Island countries are fixed and cannot be reduced due to the impacts of climate change on land territory. The declaration upholds and is premised on the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. It recalls with pride our long history of support for the Law of the Sea. It also highlights the coastal states, particularly small island developing states and low-lying states that are specially affected by sea level rise and climate change, have planned for their development based on the maritime zones guaranteed to them under the Convention. 
These maritime zones are now threatened by the effects of climate change and sea level rise, which may negatively impact the development plans for our nations. I am pleased to share that formal endorsement and support for the declaration has been received from all members of the Alliance of Small Island States, the members of the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, and members of the Climate Vulnerable Forum. The House of Lords in the UK has also supported the declaration, and we hope that more nations will support our Pacific uh, vantage point on this issue. As time and tide waits for no man, it is time that we show our solidarity and come together to address the threat of climate change and sea level rise to our global security. We are taking our own bold steps in the Pacific, but our development partners can also assist us by supporting our legal positions, signing our joint communiques, and contributing to strategic efforts towards coastal adaptation and land reclamation. If our efforts at home are well supported, we can achieve real climate security at the national, regional, and international levels. Faftai Lassi, Tuvalu Madiatua.